Well, I'd like to thank you, Nigel, for that. I'd like to acknowledge some people in the audience, in particular Fran Wild, uh, who's of course uh, chair of the Greater Wellington Region. I almost said the Greater Auckland Regional Council. <laughs> Greater Wellington Regional Council, um, Murray, of course, but also especially, I think, uh, Sir Paul Callaghan, who gave a great little presentation. And way, way he summed it up was about saying to young New Zealanders, this is the place that you can build your future. Many of you will know that I actually live in Auckland, come down to Wellington, and I always think when I fly into Wellington that I'm flying into, a, actually in my view, the best small city on the planet. Auckland's a big city, of course, <laughs> put like that. But, I, but you, you, you get a sense of energy here, you get a sense of the beauty of the environment, and you get a, a sense of the opportunity. And the Bright Ideas Challenge, which builds on an incredibly strong base, I think captures that sense of excitement that Wellington has. I've got to say to everyone in the room, as an Aucklander, I would just love to have the quality of waterfront that Wellington's been able to build over the last uh, two decades. Last year, IRL put together an amazing concept, which was What's Your Problem, New Zealand? Rosine, one of the companies featured here, was the winner of that. And so when I saw the idea of Bright Ideas, Gears, Bright Ideas Challenge, I could see that was taking exactly the same concept and then reaching out to businesses across the Wellington region, but actually not just to businesses, to people who might be thinking they could get into business to come up with the ideas to create the innovations to grow in the city. And I want to spend just a moment or two talking about what government is going to do that kind of backs that whole idea. Because uh, when I became the Minister 15 months ago, I was of the clear view that the science and innovation system in New Zealand really needed to be kick-started and driven ahead to, to, to really release the potential and energy that uh, rests in so many New Zealanders. And so we've done a number of things to date and we'll be doing more. Last year, we put a whole lot of extra money, nearly $30 million extra into fundamental research, um, and uh, McDiamond, amongst others, will have been the beneficiary of that, the Marsden Fund, uh, CRA Capability Health Research. This year, the budget will be focusing very much on connecting uh, business and science together, uh, and that'll be a, a fundamental initiative that's set out in the budget. Many of you in the room will be well familiar with Technology New Zealand, one of the brains, if you will, of the foundation of research, science and technology. That's currently a $50 million annual appropriation. We think we can do better than that. We also think that it can actually not just have more money, but it can actually work better. And I just want to give you a couple of examples of uh, the, the sorts of innovations uh, that TechNZ has been doing of late. The most uh, prominent, I think, was Weta Digital. And everyone in the room, I'm sure, is intimately familiar with the Avatar movie. And uh, the entire movie, other than the sets where there are actual uh, human stars present, is entirely digital. Every single scene is digital. And uh, we've done a partnership with Weta Digital where we're putting in, uh, as a uh, government, $6 million. Weta Digital is putting in $11 million. And they're going to take the, that technology that you saw there from the avatar level to the next level up. I guess it'll, at some point it'll make uh, sets and the like actually redundant and that everything will be able to be done digitally other than the actual actors themselves. And that is, I think, the way of the future. And when you saw the various uh, innovations there on the screen of the, all the different companies, uh, it really does um, provide an exciting challenge. Last week, uh, last week, on Friday, I was at a company in Auckland and the managing director had this particular lesson. I noticed, Paul, you actually referred to this as well. And he said this, if technology is market-led, then there's a 90% chance of that business succeeding. If, on the other hand, the innovation is technology-led, not market-led, 
then there's a 90% chance of it not succeeding. Now, you might have some quibble about those precise numbers, but the idea surely is important. And um, in various other presentations I've been to uh, with uh, Sir Paul providing information is that, for instance, McDonald's produces $71,000 revenue per employee. But technology shifts up the value enormously. So a company, for instance, like Fisher & Parker Healthcare, which increased its sales $100 million last year, its sales per employee is in the region of nearly $300,000. And that is really the future of this country. So when I saw bright ideas, that's all about New Zealand changing gear from uh, low-value employment to high-value employment. And as I said, when I come into Wellington and I, and I sense the vitality of the place, the energy of the place, the fact that, that we have now have become literally a global centre, for instance, of film, a global centre of innovation. McDiamond wins more science prizes, I think, than any other place in the country. And that reflects the, the energy and the drive of the people there. I say you've picked up a, a great idea today and I wish uh, tremendous success for it because it really is uh, the future uh, for New Zealand and the government will be working as closely as we possibly can and boosting our support for innovation and you'll be seeing more announcements of that in the budget. The Prime Minister has made this an absolutely central feature of the challenge facing uh, this country and 2010 is the year in which we are going to uh, do our part to make that sense of uh, excitement and energy and commitment to the future of New Zealand has happened. Thank you.